Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in the segment today, we are going to discuss about the performance of India in renewable energy sector. It is going to be heavily loaded by data. So I shall have to move away from the screen in order for you to write down the data or take a screenshot wherever it might be possible for me to come and make you understand something. I will be there. Okay. So this is important from the perspective of GS means paper 3. All right. Let's begin with the various topics that we are going to cover. I will try to be, I will try to cover it with brevity so that you might find it crisp and I will not stretch it very afar. Okay. Let's move on and talk about why is it in the news. So a report paving the way to carbon neutrality. India's energy transition has been released. And according to this report, there has been a significant achievements which India has done with respect to renewable energy, sustainable energy sector. And you see India is leading the way for sustainable energy in the world, a sustainable power in the world. And if we talk about the energy mix of India, what is energy mix? Energy mix is basically clubbing together of the sources of energy for any country. And we have to understand from that particular mix on what source any country is heavily dependent on. The graph which I have attached here shows you that with respect to the majority of the energy, it comes from thermal power plants, thermal energy that means specifically from coal. So coal or fossil based energy is the king of the market right now. Then we have after this is approximately 60% and then we have hydroelectricity, solar, wind and just 2% of nuclear power, 3% of biopower and small hydropower is 2%. So as you see that India is yet to have a proper mix where we see coal is diminishing. But that is something which is right now not possible because first of all, we are recuperating from the pandemic. And also now we have a the war in Russia, Ukraine that is also causing us a lot of issue with respect to clean energy. Although the dependence of dependence on crude oil by India is a lot and India imports 85% of its crude oil needs. And we see that because of that only, we need to switch to better alternatives. So we need renewable energy because it is a continuous source. Solar energy, sun will suddenly not go off and not provide us energy. Similar, we have wind and also other renewable sources of energy. Also, there is zero carbon emission. It is clean in nature. That is why we need it. Also, it is a cheaper form of electricity. Although the infrastructure that we need right now is pretty not affordable, but in the long run, it for example, I might invest 1 lakh rupee for my solar panels, but I will not be having any sort of out of pocket expense if I come, if I talk about electricity that will be generated, right? And it will also create new jobs, new skills are needed for new sectors, so it will create skilled and unskilled jobs. So why does India need to achieve such targets? Because India under the Paris Agreement for 2030 has put out certain nationally intended, nationally determined contributions in which India wants to reduce greenhouse gas emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35% if we compare the two years of 2005 and 2030. Okay. Then we have 40% of the power capacity that should come from renewable energy and that is non-fossil fuel and also create a proper carbon sink with the help of forestation of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent through additional forest and tree cover by 2030. So under this only, India wants to keep it its word and India is doing great actually. Moving on, if we talk about what has India achieved right now, but we are sitting on 100 gigawatt of energy. We need to increase it more in the next 8 to 10 years. We have to achieve our goal of 450 gigawatts by 2030. Many startups in the renewable energy space have also come up and that is certain examples I've put here. Renew Power, which is, in, which is a wind energy firm in India 
and an uh, avada energy which is committed to provide affordable clean and uh, clean and abundant source of energy c6 energy is a platform that utilizes the unlimited potential of oceans hydropower basically so these are the startups many traditional companies such as tata power as well have started to come up with ideas tata power started as a clean energy company okay to produce power from hydropower plants they have expanded their portfolio of investment in over the years to include a lot of thermal power as well and recently india achieved fifth global position in solar power deployment by surpassing italy now this is something for you to just read okay so solar power capacity has increased by more than 11 times in the last 5 years from 2.6 gigawatt in march 2014 to 30 gigawatt in july 2019 presently solar tariff in india is very competitive and has achieved grid parity as of october 2021 india's energy capacity stood at 1.49 gigawatt representing 38.27% of the overall installed power capacity and providing a great opportunity for the expansion of green data centers in october 2021 india's renewable energy capacity increased by 1522.35 megawatt in october 2021 again the ministry of power announced a new set of rules aimed at re- reducing financial stress for stakeholders and safeguarding timely cost recovery in electricity generation in july 2021 the mnrd gave the go ahead to ntpc renewable energy limited which is a 100% subsidiary of ntpc to build a 4750 megawatt renewable energy park at the run of kutch in kavra gujarat and this will be india's largest solar park to be developed by the country's leading power producer in april 2021 the central electricity authority and ceew center for energy finance jointly launched the india renewable dashboard that provides detailed operational information on renewable energy projects in india in april 2021 the ministry of power released the draft national electricity policy 2021 and green hydrogen mission ethanol blending program this is clean energy green hydrogen when hydrogen is produced by the help of renewable energy so that carbon dioxide or any sort of greenhouse gas is not emitted ethanol blending program when 20% of ethanol needs to be blended by the year 2025 earlier it was 2030 it has been now advanced to 2025 so that is also a form of clean energy bharat state six vehicles as well as electrification of transport is the need of the year india is going ahead in this region as well so this is a graph that we have of course put out for you see solar power as of october 2021 has the largest share in the installed capacity of renewable energy then we have wind power then we have bio power and small hydro so solar power is the top second wind bio and then small hydro and this is the installed renewable energy capacity fiscal year 2021 comparable to fiscal year 2022 high margin 94.4 to 149.6 then electricity generation for from renewable energy sources fiscal year 16 to fiscal year 2021 as you see fiscal year 20 was a lot but here 2021 it has come down a little right moving on if we talk about what more needs to be done first of all we have to increase awareness at the level of consumer so that i as a consumer should also know why do we need to switch how can i switch what are the benefits for us as well as the environment then investment needs to be encouraged by giving tax breaks or giving subsidies in the renewable energy market we have to encourage and attract private players specifically accessibility should be there that means everybody can have the accessibility it should not be like far flung areas are completely cut off from the benefits of renewable energy and or that we need affordability as well if the infrastructure is going to cost a lot if it is going to cost a lot with respect to normal consumers they are not going to switch they will be like okay i can bear with the expenses that come at a monthly basis but if it is a huge lump sum amount of money at the first go i might think about it then replacement rate of carbon emitting resources should also be taking place otherwise nothing can be done if we introduce clean energy vehicles and we also have carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emitting vehicles 
at par with them then, then what will happen it will nothing advantages will happen because whatever clean energy we are using to get rid of carbon dioxide is being replaced by the carbon emitting resources okay so this is the things that we need to do so in conclusion consumers they have to be active partners that means awareness generation affordability and accessibility which i talked about in this journey and there is rising consciousness of sustainable practices many people are now switching over to bamboo toothbrushes bamboo straws or something they are using some sort of things that are not plastic in nature so that whatever they have to use for like a long period of time they are making it possible to be of sustainable nature like i try to also use straws which are made of bamboo and not use the plastic straws and carry the bamboo straws with myself at home similarly we have bamboo hair brushes bamboo tooth brushes we are helping the economy as well as the environment because after a period of time you will get rid of your tooth brushes and that toothbrush is of course made from plastic it is harmful to environment so these are the little things that we can do to help the environment as a whole okay now let's move on and look at our question how is india performing on its way to cleaner energy discuss the advantages and disadvantages of renewable energy with the context of india so write it in 250 words that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching